Greeting coaches, you are listening to the All Access Coaching Podcast powered by the Glazier Drive. My name is Rick Stewart and I created All Access Coaching with a vision of coaches helping coaches, which is why I partner with the folks at Glazier because they share the same vision as I do. Everything that All Access Coaching and Glazier does is focused on one thing, making you a better coach. Hosted by allaccesscoaching.com. This podcast is brought to you by Team Nation, a digital playbook that your players can instantly access on their phones in a video game type of learning experience. Build your playbook online or pull it from a library. View how often your players looked at it, or should I say played it, because they will feel like they're playing a Madden-like video game while learning your playbook. You can go check that out at TeamNationSports.com. Hey, we're really excited to be talking with PJ Gibbs. Um, Coach Gibbs coaches out in Florida. I met him through social media. You know, social media has been really cool where you can really connect with coaches and learn. I've been really intrigued with this Iowa State three high safety look. Um, I'm a 4-2-5 guy. And what I love about the 4-2-5, I, by having five defensive backs, which really I have three safeties also out of the 4-2 look, um, it gave me a lot of flexibility lining up to all these crazy formations we see now. And my D line and inside linebackers weren't affected because I had these three safeties and they're moving around. But I started thinking, well, how do you do that? Is that an odd front? So I got on social media and started asking questions and, and coach Gibbs responded and said, coach, I do it. I visit with Iowa state. This is what I do. And, and so we started talking. I go, coach, I got to get you on a podcast and let's talk about that. Hey, hey coach, tell us a little bit about yourself, man. I'm, I'm excited to get, talk some ball with you. Coach, first of all, thank you for having me. I'm excited to be sharing this uh, this knowledge with you and uh, helping coaches. Just like you said in the opening, the goal is to help as many coaches as possible here. And I'm really excited to to kind of talk about how we do things at Eastley and um, you know just kind of just, just get with you and and and, and teach you you know how, how we do this stuff and try to make it as simple as possible for these guys. And um, but first of all, I'll get into my uh, kind of my journey. Um, you know, the system we really run here is a fast and physical three high safety defensive system. Um, I'm at East Lee County High School in Lehigh Acres, Florida, which is on the West Coast. Uh, I live in Naples, Florida, which is about 20 minutes from Marco Island. If we had any fishermen that are listening, it's a pretty, pretty popular place for guys to go. And um, but, uh, you know, the one thing about me is um, I just finished up my 23rd year of coaching uh, kind of my journey. I was a, a high school football player and college football player in New Jersey. I uh, had the opportunity to go back and coach at my alma mater, Manasquan High School, uh, as a D-line linebacker and eventually became the coordinator there and um, won uh, multiple state championships and conference championships in New Jersey and, um, you know, got married in 2009. And uh, we had our first, uh, my daughter in 2011. And, um, you know, New Jersey, if anybody, you know, is in the Northeast and, you know, they understand you know, the cost of living never goes down. So. Um, at the time, my brother-in-law was at the University of Missouri as an analyst and reached out to me and said, hey, if you're ever looking to move, um, I'm in Collier County recruiting right now. And they're they're looking for coaches and teachers. And I had reciprocity with my teaching certificate in New Jersey down to Florida. So uh, I sent my stuff out and interviewed. And it was a pretty quick process. Uh, we moved down uh, to Florida. I was a D.C. at Gulf Coast High School in 2015. And uh, we won the first district title in the history of the school in 2016. And then I moved to Palmetto Ridge. Uh, where we had the number one defense in Southwest Florida in 2020, uh, running both the three high safety and, and, and bare front. And we won the CCAC championship for the first time in the history of the school. And, um, you know, I had the opportunity to be involved with the U.S. national team as well. So I started that process in 2008, coaching regional camps and uh, was given the opportunity to be the head coach for the U-17 national team in 2018, 2019, where we beat a uh, Canadian all-star team and, um, was asked to coach the Japanese national team in 2020. And this is kind of where, um, you know, we, we sat down with uh, coach Tyson vet from Iowa state and he gave us because of the personnel that we had. And um, we, we taught the three high safety basic principles to uh, young men that really didn't speak any English in five days. And we ended up coming out on top and beating the U 17 national team um, 28 to 20 and creating turnovers and, and running to the football and kind of masking coverages and things like that and getting more athletes out on the field. And Coach, so back up, back up. So you're an American, obviously living in Florida. You yes, sir. coach a bunch of guys from Jap Japan who don't speak English. You barely met them and put the defense in. And five days later, you beat the Americans. 
Yes, sir. In, uh, so in United it, States of America, right? We yes. did American football. We lost to the Japanese team. Yes, sir. Yeah, we we. Um, oh my God. The, 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 yeah, the kids, the kids did a phenomenal job, and um, you know, uh, and a lot of those kids from that U.S. national team are now uh, going to be signing a um, couple quarterbacks. One's going to, I think, go to Oklahoma State, and other guys going to Florida State, and they had running backs that are going to Michigan, and linemen that are at Penn State now, and. Here we had these kids that are off a 12 hour flight and got the playbook and studied it. And we went out in, in AT&T stadium in Arlington, Texas and executed on ESPN. So it was, it was a pretty phenomenal uh, experience for the coaching staff and, and for the kids as well, because that's something they'll remember for the rest of their lives. So obviously it's good. It's, we're going to get into it, but obviously it must be a very easy defense to, to teach if you did that. I mean, five days. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it, uh, you can get pretty intricate with it. And and, and, and that's something I, I know you and I'll discuss, um, you know, a little bit, but uh, it, it's, it's really, you know, kind of figuring out, you know, what, what, what kind of guys you have and how can this fit your personnel? And it, you need to morph some stuff from, you know, maybe other coaches and influences that you have, which I'll get into here in a second, kind of my, my evolution as a coach defensively. And um, but yeah, it's uh, it was it was a pretty exciting experience altogether. Coach, the last couple of days, we've been doing a lot of chatting and stuff uh, for those of you guys. Um, you might be listening to this a year or two years later, but right now it's, we're over Christmas break. Christmas just finished up a couple of days ago. New Year's is tomorrow. So uh, coach and I have been kind of talking in between holiday stuff. Coach, I know you're very humble after talking to you, but coach, I heard a little bit of snippet. I'm going to make you brag for a second. You said you won some state titles in New Jersey. Yes, sir. Yeah. So um, Madison High School, where, where I played and I coached um, one of the premier small school programs in the state of New Jersey. Uh, 16 state championships total as a program, um, over 55 conference championships, uh, just, um, the, j- just a great program. I uh, was involved in, um, two, two state championship, uh, coaching staffs, um, one as a player. And, um, you know, we had a streak of 10 years where we either won a conference or a state championship as a program or both. Now coach, you know, uh, you and I were talking about before the podcast is that it's really easy to go watch these guys, you know, what Nick Saban's doing and, you know, what these private schools are doing where they've got 12 D one guys every year. Um, you know, what about guys like me where, you know, can, 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 is this small school football stuff too, coach, or do I have to have dudes in a big old roster? You mentioned New Jersey was small school ball out in Florida. What, you know, give us a kind of an idea what your roster size are. I mean, are you suiting up 30 kids, 20 kids, um, 50 kids, you know, give us an idea of the levels here. Uh, so yeah, in, in New Jersey, we were, we're group two school. So um, I, ironically, we had about 65 guys on our roster. And, and when I got to Florida, uh, the three high schools I've been at Gulf coast, we were a seven, a school. Uh, we had about um, 115 kids in the program, Palmetto Ridge. We had about 85 kids in the program at, as a seven, a, and then East Lee, where I'm currently at now, we're a six, a school. So we suited up about 45 kids. Um, okay. So, yeah, you've, you've been on both sides of the spectrum where you've suited up a hundred plus and then you've been down to small school ball where you're suiting up, you know, 50, 60 kids. Yes, sir. Yeah. And, and with the, with the U S teams, you know, you're getting 40 on your roster, uh, whether it was the international team or the, or the, uh, American team, you're getting 40 kids on your roster. Good, good. I'm, I'm sorry, coach. I, I hijacked your talk. I, I know you're talking about <laughs> your next slide. Here. No, this is no, this, no, this is great coach. I know I'm, I, I'm enjoying it. Um, so kind of uh, the defensive evolution that I've gone through as a coach and just guys that I've learned from, um, you know, playing in high school, we were, we were a four, three, um, my head coach, Vic Cabu, uh, who has had over, has over 250 wins. Uh, he passed away in 2007, but they had a really good relationship with uh, the UVA staff, uh, George Welsh and Al Golden. Um, we were in school. And then when I first started coaching out of college, we'd go to uh, Virginia for spring ball every year and kind of how, um, you know, I, I learned as a, as a young, young player and a young football coach, uh, the, the foundational principles in the four, three, and kind of kept that, you know, through, um, through my early on coaching career. Uh, I got a court, my first coordinator's job in 2006. I was young, I was 26 years old and was given an opportunity to do that. And it, it was a great experience and transition into Florida, obviously um, we're playing all year round and uh, um, you know, the athletes here, you know, you have to, like you were talking about with your four, two, five, like you have to put more athletes on the field and, you know, just because of the, the schematics and the openness and the wide open. And uh, I think I worked it out. Um, uh, athlete in Florida will um, probably get anywhere between 800 to a thousand more snaps in their career because of the affordability we have with the weather down here. And um, be, because of just we're, we're really, it's 12 months a year, you know, down here. Um, so we get, we get a lot more experience, but 
the match coverage we went to and the pressure stuff, um, coach Don Brown has been a huge influence on me. Um, obviously, you know, anything you talk about match coverage, uh, you know, you talk about coach Saban and you know, what he's able to do with, with, with the guys that he has. Um, but it really, it's what, what fits your personnel and anything that I've learned, I've always tweaked it to the personnel that we've run based on the programs that we've been at the size of the kids, how fast we are, how small we are, what we need to do. Um, and then with the three high safety stuff, um, kind of matching this, uh, buddy, Ryan, Don Brown, Dan Lanning, Matt Campbell, uh, just kind of morphing everything. And, and then again, you know, seeing what we can do and then anything that we're not doing really well, take it out. Like, you know, we don't want to have, you know, 27 things going into a game. We want to buy them by that midweek. We want to say, okay, we're doing these seven or eight things really, really well. Let, let's continue to do that. And then always in the back of your mind. And I think what, what some of the best coaches in the country do is are able to adjust whether, you know, and it's in-game adjustments, whether that's at a, during a timeout or at the end of a quarter or halftime, you know, what can we do to put our kids in the best position to be successful? So th those are guys that have been a huge impact on me um, as a coach. Uh, coach, help us out. Um, you're talking about Dan Brown, uh, Michigan state fame, Dan Brown. Uh, Don Brown. Well, he, so coach Brown and I, I, I met coach Brown when I was 23 years old. He was actually at UMass where he currently just took the head, head coaching job. And um, we, we, we all kind of just uh, through whether it's through clinics or things like that. I, I just kept my relationship with coach and he actually has a house down here in Naples. So when he got the job at Michigan, him and I kind of, you know, rekindled our relationship and um, just, you know, he, anything I ever needed, he, he, he was always there. Uh, and it, he's, he's one of the, one of the best dudes in the business, one a guy you can text and he'll get right back to you. And, and he's just, just a great human being, not just a football coach. And who's these, uh, who's this Dan Lanning and Matt Campbell? Well, Dan Lanning is now he's, he's a, the new head coach at the university of Oregon. Uh, he's right now tomorrow, I'm actually going to the orange bowl. He's again, the DC at Georgia. And he was kind enough to zoom with our coaching staff during the quarantine. So a lot of his stuff, a lot of his pressures, we kind of morphed into our stuff and what we do. And Matt Campbell is a head coach at Iowa was kind enough to have uh, coach v Tyson vet uh, zoom with us as well. Uh, coaches, the uh, linebackers coach at Iowa state. And, and that's really kind of the, the, the foundation of this three high safety defense that we went to. And it was things that we just kind of morphed from everybody, whether it was coach Brown, coach Lanning, coach Campbell, coach vet. Coach, it was Tyson Vets talk that got me, that led to this journey that now you and I are becoming friends. Um, year, a couple of years ago, as you know, my company would go around and I do clinics and film people and stuff. And we filmed a clinic up in Nebraska. And Tyson Vet was the linebacker coach at Iowa State. And he was talking. And it's by far one of the best clinic talks. It's up on Coach Sue, it's on my website. It was by far one of the best clinic talks I've ever heard. You know, a lot of these college guys, they get up. And, you know, they talk more about their program. Tyson got right into it and boom, had taught. And, and, and I was just really intrigued by this three high safety thing he was talking about. It was really focused on linebacker play. And, and, and from that talk and, and uh, that we have, that's where I started putting those messages out on Twitter that you responded to. So, so yeah, I'm from afar. I've never met him. I would love to go to Iowa state. I'm a huge uh, Tyson vet uh, Vet, am I saying it wrong? Tyson Vec. Uh, sorry. Yeah, Vet. V V E V E I D T. V yeah, D T. Yeah, Tyson Vet. Huge fan. Huge fan. It's one of the best clinic talks I've ever heard. Yeah. No, like I said, he he and and, and you know, going into the the next part is is talking about our goals and um you know look, looking at what the you know just the different coaches that have influenced our, our our defensive you know philosophy and goals. But I think the biggest thing in coach, you know, that first bullet point you and I'll we'll get into in a little bit adapt into your personnel. Like, you know, what, what do you have, you know, uh, as far as, you know, D line wise linebacker wise, um, you know, in your secondary, you know, who's supposed to go where, you know, where are you putting your chess pieces? I think that's a big part of this too. Um, one of the things in the next bullet point we stress is S plus T minus X. So sacks plus turnovers minus explosive plays are, are going to equal wins. And um, you know, when we first went to this kind of S plus T minus X, we, we define an explosive play as anything over 20 yards um, to, to, to take away. And, and then as we got a little bit better at it, then we knocked it down to 15 yards. So the, the, the more that you rep things and, and the kids start understanding where they fit and coverages and you, you can kind of tweak, you know, your goals and, 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 and what you need to do to be successful. Um, our, oh, our back up back. I love that. Sacks plus turnovers. Yes, sir. Minus explosive plays 
equal wins. I'm a physical yes, guy, so you put a math formula up, I get all, I get all excited. <laughs> I'm kind of a nerd. Yeah. Sacks plus turnovers minus explosive plays equals wins. Love it. I love it. Yeah. And, and, and you know what? And it's, it's, it's easy to adapt to, to your style, anybody's style. Um, it doesn't necessarily have to be the three high stuff, but, um, and it's something the kids can rally around. You know, it's, it's all about, you know, collaboration and cohesion amongst your kids and your staff and something you can keep reiterating. Um, one of the things I took from coach Brown um, when we first met was no traders on defense. You got to run the football. If you, if you want to play defense for us, you got to run. If you don't want to run the football, you're, you're, you're not going to play. You're not going to play defense and we're going to arrive in a bad move. You know, we're going to ride in a bad move, you know? So it's like, you know, our, we, what we stress to our guys is it, it, the big hits will come, but the goal is to get them on the ground. You know, don't, don't, don't lose your fundamentals. Everything we teach you about tackling and running to the ball and angles, just because you want to get a big highlight on your puddle, but well, you're going to end up overrunning the play. And then we're going to end up getting into that explosive play category where if the guy's a dude, we may not catch him. We want to get as many people around the football as possible. And then again, stress fundamentals, getting there and there you got to run to the ball, run to the ball, run to the ball. Um, next one being, you know, I, our, my head coach, coach Kabu always said offensive, we can score three defense. You hold them to two that that's always the goal. So if you can hold your opponent to 14 points or under, there's a good chance with the offense and the, and the guys that you're working with that the, 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 they'll produce three scores and, you know, more than likely. And again, you have to think about, you know, we can't turn the ball over. If the ball's on the ground, we got to get it. The ball's in the air. It's ours. We got to go pick it off give our offense extra opportunities. But if we can stay away from turnovers and follow that, we'll be in good shape at the end of the game. And obviously, no matter what you do, no matter what you see, you need to stop the run. You need to stop the run. Um, you, you know, it, it's high school football. I don't care what offense you see, you need to stop the run, um, especially with the RPO stuff. Because uh, this defense, what it does is it gives an illusion of, and we'll get into the, the schematics of it in, in a bit, coach, but why I like it, and because we see so much spread down here, is you have numbers where they want numbers. And if, if you talk to any RPO coach, they don't want to hand the ball off. They want to pull it and they want to get the ball either down the field or out on the perimeter to their athletes. Well, what we're doing is we, we're kind of with, with our numbers, we're forcing you to, t to hand the ball off, which is something that you don't want to do. And, and when they do hand the ball off, we want to hold them to less than three yards of carry, less than 100 yards rushing. And then the last thing is we want to be great in the red zone, which is the 20 yard line in. And then the green zone, we call it the green zone. I got this from coach Coughlin, who was with the giants is the money is the money area, the 10 yard, 10 yards in it. So, you know, we want to be great in those two areas, hold you to a field goal attempt, because again, it's high school football, high school kickers for the most part, you know, I coached in an all-star game. We had all state kicker. He did a great job, but for the most part in a, in an, a 10 to 11 game schedule, you maybe we'll see one to two decent kickers and it's a 50, 50 chance of them making it. So if we, get, if we can hold you to a field goal attempt, I'm feeling pretty good about, you know, how we're going to end up at the end of the game. Man, coach, I love it. I, I love the bull points is it's easy to remember. You know, we always talk about things like, um, like changing your culture and, and, and um, your mission statement, and you've got to have your, your, your core values. And I always say, they've got to be simple and everybody in your program. If I walk into your locker room, everybody should be able to recite it. Same thing with defensive goals. I could probably ask any kids on the defense and they're like, Hey, uh, sacks plus turnovers minus explosive plays equal wins. We're going to hold them under 14 points, three yards a game, and we're going to win. This is easy. You're not making this massive metrics where I got to go get my CPA accountant to, 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 to tell me if I hit my goals. I like it. That's simple coach. You call this defense, the fast and physical three high defensive system. I'm a read and react guy. I'm kind of a bend, but don't break. I kind of feel like I sit back stimulus response. Eventually the offense is going to make a mistake. I think you come from a, from a different angle. You know, why fast and physical? Uh, well, I, you know, first of all, our goal is to make the quarterback's life miserable and the offensive coordinator's life miserable. We want them having nightmares about, you know, watching, preparing for us and watching us on film. Um, and again, it, it, we, we like to, we like to force the issue. Um, so we're, we're going to be moving. We're going to be coming from different directions. We're, we're going to be, you know, giving you, the same look, but, but have multiple things off it, you know, cause again, we want it to be easy to teach at the end of the day. Um, but we also want, we, we all, we also want to come from different angles and different directions. So for us, it's again, it's forcing the issue, forcing the issue, but just like, just like anything, you need to be able to adjust if something's figured out. And that's why 
for, for us, for, for our coaching staff, when we come, when we talk about pressure and we talk about forcing the issue, giving those, giving those concrete same looks, but coming from different places to me is our, is an advantage for us. We want to have the advantage. I think a lot of offensive coaches feel that they have the advantage. We want to flip the script on that. We, we want to dictate. I, I tell our kids at all the time, like, Hey, listen, we're dictating the, the tempo, the pace, you know, we're going to force them in, into bad decisions, not us. So I, I think that really kind of explains our, our, the philosophy behind the fast and physical defense. Awesome. Awesome. Um, coach, the, the beauty of it, and, 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 and I'm sure it's why you fell in love with it. And it's why I'm doing the four, two, five, why I sought you out, um, lining up, right. I think the ability of having three safeties, I give Gary Patterson a lot of credit. You mentioned your guys that you give credit to, you know, um, these defensive guys that are smart enough several years ago said, Hey, the way we're going to adjust all these, because in high school football, we see everything, right. One week we're defending a wing T then we're, when they were facing a two tight end eye back. Then, of course, there's all the spread. Some spread guys have tight end and sniffer back, so they're really kind of a two-back look, 22, 21 personnel. Um, but then there's the guys who are 10 personnel, right? They don't have a tight end in their building. Um, uh, let's, let's get into alignments, Coach. What is the beauty about this three-high safety thing? And, and I know in, in one podcast you can't cover every formation, but maybe just give us a, give us a quick snapshot of, of the beauty of how you're lining these guys up. And, Coach, we probably need to talk about – um, actually, let me back up, Coach. Can you talk about what type of kid you're looking at in each position? Um, and I know we talked about it. You're you're a split field team, so kind of go through that, and then maybe take us through uh, one or two formations and, and how how this three safety thing actually looks. Sure. So I, I'll start. I'll, I'll work my way from the D line, and I'll work my way back, and then I'll, I'll talk about kind of you know how we do things and how there are alignments and things like that, but. Um, the way that we were taught by coach vet is if you, if, if you're a team that has a, a, a very strong defensive line, um, they, they will align in a zero and two, four eyes up front. Um, they'll two, they'll two gap the nose and they'll play, they'll play the, the you know, the hard four eyes, um, in, in, in a 10 personnel set. Um, so if you have guys that you, you are very confident in handling the B gap and you have a nose, that's a two gap guy, you know, by all means, you know, you'll go ahead and roll it that where um, generally for us, uh, we down, down in Florida. And then again, too, on the, on the, na- on the national team, um, we don't have with the Japanese guys, especially we didn't have guys that were like 275, 280. I think our biggest defensive lineman was like 205. Um, so what, what we did is we kind of morphed our four two five philosophy into this, where we were always slanting away from the back in 10 personnel. So at the back line up on the right, we made a lucky call. Everybody's slanting. So in a sense, you were a five, a shade, and a four eye when you when, when you were slanting. But it, but it was our strength. You know, we were quick up front. So that was our strength. So that's kind of like the defensive line philosophy, you know, with, with this alignment. Um, the inside guys. Well, really coach, coach, and personnel-wise, so they, you get a small and big kids. Yes. Um, whether I'm small or big. Does it matter where does my best D lineman go, or I do? Where's my strongest D lineman go? My quickest? Where would you put them as far as I'm looking at my kids? I've got my quickest kid standing here, my strongest kid here, and I got my Roly Poly over here, right? He nobody called him sure, late sure. to dinner, and and he's he's probably wider than he is tall. Where do sure. you put those kids? So I mean, for me, what I would do is I I'd probably put the the, the quickest kid. I'd probably put him on the on the nose. Uh, because I think that anytime, like, you know, example, uh, two years ago when I was at Palmetto Ridge, our nose guard was a, 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 the 147 pound state, re, a state wrestling champ. Um, and Brendan, Brendan was first team all area for us at 147 pounds and just gave centers a nightmare really. Cause he was so quick off the ball. So I would say that for a high school team, if you have a, a wrestling type kid, a quick dude, put him on the nose and move him um, because the, 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 he'll, he'll do a great job in there. Um, to me, depending on schematically coach, what are you seeing up, up, up front blocking wise? Um, I would say if, if you're your best kid, I would make him the guy that's moving to the back or the four eye to the, to the backside. And I put the lesser of the three to away from the back. That, that, that's what I, I'd say. If you gave me those three kids up front, that's kind of how I, that's kind of how I would do it. So for the defensive line, um, going into the linebackers, they really have to be guys. Cause again, the beauty of this defense is for the most part, you're going to have forced defenders on both sides post snap. So those guys really just need to be really be pluggers and they can play run like crazy. 
um, you know, because of how you're going to align your secondary uh, with the numbers. And then the, again, the one thing the system will teach you is how you're going to be able to put numbers to places where the, the OC really doesn't want you to have numbers. And it really, um, with the inside backers, it, you know, it, it really takes the stress off them in the RPO game, it, which to me is great because now you're just teaching your kids to run to the football. And it's, 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 it's an easier transition and it's not, it's not very, very difficult. Um, again, they have to be, you know, they have to know their run fits and where, where they fit, especially if you have the, if the guys who are moving up front, it's a little bit easier when you're in the zero and two, four eyes. But again, that's what your walkthroughs for. That's what the install periods for and, you know, showing these guys where they fit. So the inside backers really just have to be guys that are pluggers. Um, they, they, and again, if you have a dude, the guy that's a stud, the, you know, you can put him in, in, in the mic or the will spot, just depending on, you know, wh where you think he fits best. Um, so that, that's how, how we kind of look at the linebackers. Um, and, and your whole defense, you're flopping. You have field and field and boundary guys. Yes, sir. Yeah. So yeah. Inside backers. Yeah. Um, usually like for, for me and my reading react four two five is my one backer is, is he's kind of a coach on the field. He's going to be a future D coordinator. The other guy is, is, um, the, 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 the movie, the program, right. Even the younger guys are forgetting about that movie, but, but, uh, uh the, the guy who is on steroids and puts his head through the windows, right. And, 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 does, and you know, uh, doesn't even have two brain cells up, up there. Um, um, that, you know, I always talk about the, you know, that guy, the guy, if I was in a bar fight, I wanted him to have my back, right? This is, that's my linebacker. I always put him on the weak side and then my defensive coordinator type linebacker, you know, he's kind of my strong guy making the calls. Does that matter as far as which guy goes to the running back, which guy goes away? Uh, I mean, for us, we, we've always just played right and left to be honest with the coach. Um, because I, I think, again, it, it goes back to our, you know, simplicity philosophy. It's the same picture for those guys. Um, you know, it, 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 it will change a little bit if we have a guy that, like examples like you gave, like um, for a, a, a smarter guy, obviously we want, we want him more where the action is because he's going to have to do more of the talking and things along those lines. And if you have a guy that's more of like, you know, we talk about being a plugger and a guy that's a more, a more physical kid that's just going to go, then yeah, we, we, we may want, we want as an athlete, he might be a better athlete. We, may, we might want him more in the operating if he needed to, to operate in space. So, yeah. So again, for us right now, when we, when we install it, we just have a left and a right guy. Um, so they're not, they're not flopping. Your DNs are, would be flopping. you got one guy goes with the running back, sure. one guy's going, but your two yes, linebackers, sir. they just line up right and left. That they, They'll just line up. And again, you can evolve to like we, we did this year at East Lee is we evolved to a Mike and a will because one guy was more like you said of, of a coach on the field. The other guy was more, of an athletic kid. So we wanted, if we needed to get him in space more, we would, we would move them around. But again, it's, it's going to take time for you to kind of determine who, who that can be. Um, the three best players in, in this, in this defense need to be your boundary safety, your Viper and your boundary corner. Um, the Viper the, coach for the, for the, for the, for the podcast guys, the Viper is who? Viper is, is so he's like your hybrid guy. He, he's a guy that's um, that can that if you need him to cover, he can, but can also but can also play in the run game. So he, he's he's kind of like that extra, you know, that extra outside linebacker hybrid guy. Um, if guys remember um, from Michigan a couple of years ago, they had Khalid Hudson and Jabril Peppers, um, you know, were, were the, the Vipers in, in Coach Brown's defense at the University of Michigan. So guys that if you when, when you get into your pressure stuff and you're going to run some cover one stuff and you need them to cover and you're not sending them. Those are guys that, that, that you trust in, in coverage, but also too, they got to understand it and they need to force the run as well. So that that's your three best guys are your, your Viper, your hybrid guy, your boundary safety and your boundary corner. Because again, you, you need them to be more of the physical as opposed to your field guys who are more of, of your guys that are, that are your coverage guys. Um, because you know, a high school quarterback going from the right hash thrown across the field to the left hash. You just need that field safety to be able to knock the ball down. I mean, if he, if he catches it, great. And that was one of the things that, you know, we talked about when we coached the Japanese team and we were installing this is, you know, that field safety guy just has to be able to understand coverage and where he fits on the zone in the zone pressure scheme and just be able to knock the ball down. Your so the, Viper, the Viper is basically, is, he's a boundary. He's on the boundary. He's, he can play playing outside backer. You might even slide him in on the inside a little bit. 
and and he could be a boundary safety or or he really he's really more of a prototypical linebacker type of kid where your field safety is your, is more of a defensive back type of looking kid. Yes. Yeah. So the, the Vipers rule and in, 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 in there is, is he always goes to the passing strength. Um, there, there are some pressure rules for the Viper uh, where he always goes to the field when we're coming from the boundary. And that's something in the system, you know, you know, that, you know, we'll talk about. Um, but yeah, so your, your Rover really has that middle safety and how we run it. He's got to be your dude. So like our Rover this year at East Lee, he was named first team all area. He had, he was second in the area. He had 115 tackles from that middle safety position. He has to be your best defensive player in this because he's got to be able to play the run. He's got to be able to pressure. He's got to be able to play the middle third of the field in, in your, in your fire zones. And he's also got to be able to play the quarterback in certain situations in the zone read scheme. So he had the rover. It he has to be your best defensive player bar none in this, in this defense. So you call it a three safety system. Um, there's a, I see a Viper, I see a free safety, a Rover, and then, and then a, a field safety of the four, which of the three are the safeties? you the, the free, the Rover and, and the money side, the strong, the free, the Rover. Okay. So that Viper is, is more a little bit in, in a linebacker type of a box. Correct. Okay. So, so, tr- so like traditionally um, he would be, he would be like uh an outside backer type, but also needs to have coverage skills because when you send pressures and we're in, in a cover one look or, or we're going to run cover one, he needs to be able to run with two, basically what it comes down to. Okay. And then the other three, the free, the rover, and the safety are the, are your true safety looking type of kids. Yes. But yes. Rover's, that, like, ro- rover's got to be your dude. Hey, he ha- that's just, like I said, the guy, the, the kid that played it this year, um, Jeff Renville, he, he was, again, he just got named first team all area and was only a safety in this defense for one year and got named first team all area. So Jeff really bought into what we were doing. And like I said, to have 115 tackles from that spot, he, the, the, the beauty about the, 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 the system coach is that that Rover is not accounted for in any blocking scheme that you're going to see. So he's always free to the football. And that's why Jeff had the year he did because they, they, they didn't account for him in the blocking scheme. Uh, based on our alignment, the rules that we have. So um, he's got to be your dude. And your corners, you got a field and boundary corner. Yes, sir. Yeah. So the boundary corner, because we'll send pressure from the boundary. Um, also too, he has to be the more the physical, of the two where the field one has to be more athletic of the two. So when you're looking, when you're looking at that, that's how, that's how you have to roll with those guys. Um, and then your boundary safety has to be able to tackle in space because again, it, when we get into the, the system, we talk about like three by one adjustments. We're going to, we're going to play some invert coverage. We're going to, he has to be able to trap over the top. Um, when we send our boundary pressure, he has to be able to get into the boundary and play and be physical uh, in the run game. So that boundary side has to be more physical side where the field side is more, is your more athletic side when it comes to corners and safeties. Um, coach, you keep talking about field and boundary. Is that kind of, how you flop. Um, do you have the building system if you wanted to flop based on running back or if you wanted to ba- flop based on tight ends or you kind of just feel boundary? Well, we're kind of feel boundary, but the thing is with, with the tight end, um, going back to like the Rover, his rule is always a lineup over number three. So like obviously in a 10 personnel setting, he's aligned over the back because the back is number three and he he's going to be the quarterback player in the zone read game. Uh, so if, if, if we get inside zone, you have right now you have six guys plus plus the safety uh, away from the, the, the safety to the back, um, adding on to the run game, and you have the rover for the quarterback. So again, like I said, pre snap it doesn't look that we have a lot of guys in the box, but post snap we do. A post snap, so, um, so you so, know. So to recap, is your three D lineman? You could just go field boundary right left with them. If if you and I ever uh, if God ever answered our prayers and both our DNs were you know, identical twins. Right. Um, yep. but you could also take the two DNs and set one to the back and one away from the back. You don't really don't mess with your linebackers just right and left. And then yep. your, your back, your back six guys are, are basically field boundary, except the Rover, the Rover finds number three. Did I correct? So right? yes, sir. Yeah. So if, for example, if that, if that, um, if we got a, 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 a three by one look with the tight end, the Rover is now going to line up over, the tight end because he's number three and then because we have single width and we'll talk about that more. 
that um, that corner or safety, whether we're playing trap or invert, will add on to the run game late and they become the quarterback player against three by one. Awesome. Coach, my read and react four, two, five, even though um, philo- philosophically we're different and that you're attacking and I'm uh, stimulus response, but um, well, your stimulus response too. I shouldn't have said that is that I'm kind of a bin, but don't break philosophy. That's more accurate, but coach, you know, it comes up um, um, ball, middle of the field, right. Um, and, you know, I've already got my kids making the calls of, of who's going to the left side and who's going to the right side. And Oh crap, balls in the middle of the field. How do you define middle of the field versus hash? Because it's not perfect science, right? The referee sure. doesn't just put the ball in three spots like we do in clinic talks. That ball moves right. all over the place. Yep. So what we'll do is like, so right now, if they broke the huddle, we'll go, we'll do it based off the quarterback's arm. So most of the time we, we face a right-handed quarterback, we'll, vi- the Viper will be left. So it'll be Viper left, okay. at, w- which will turn into the, the field guys. We'll go with, they always travel with the Viper. The only time they don't travel with the Viper is in some of the pressure stuff in the system that, that, that you and I will talk about. But if they broke the huddle, balls in the middle of the field, we were facing a right-handed quarterback. Those guys know Viper left. Obviously, if we're facing a left-handed quarterback, we're going Viper right. And then the Rovers adjust in based on where number three is. Okay. So your boundary guys are going to the quarterback's arm, or is it backwards? The field, the field guys will always travel with the Viper. So the field guys will go to the quarterback's arm because, again, they're more of the athletic of, of, of the guys. And we'll put the – which will end up at the balls on the hash. The boundary guys – We'll be away from the Viper. Awesome. 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 Um, coach, uh, what about when you're trying to flop versus the no huddle fast tempo guys? I know you see a lot of that in Florida. Yeah. Well, I'm, you know, again, um, we give our guys concrete rules. So I mean, we, we coach me honest with you. We'll, we'll see selective hurry up. A lot of the guys down here are like to hurry up and wait, like they get to the line and they have all their signs and all this other stuff. And which I don't really care because, okay, you're going to do that. We, we can get aligned. And then I, I can see how you're lined up. And then I, I, I might give you a look and then call a pressure, you know, but um, if, if you can give your guys definitive rules for any, for those situations. And the thing is you need to, you need to practice, you need to practice them, right? You can't just say, okay, well, Hey, they're going no huddle. We don't know what we're doing and burn timeouts. Right. So you have to practice against, you know, that up tempo. And, you know, and, and again, that's why with, with our coverages, um, w- for the most part, we'll use color, you know, blue, green, orange, black, white, gold, like, because now the kids, it's, and boom, they're conditioned. They know what that means. Um, you know, and, and if you want to co- go fast, we just got to give you a color. And, 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 that, and that's really it. And then, same thing, our pressures are all one word stuff, everything's one word. Cause you don't need to have, you know, Apache boom, 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 boom. And now the ball snapped and your kids are looking at you and now, and now here comes the offense. So yes. simple, 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 simple. Love it. Love it. Love it. One word stuff. I, I, us wing T guys on offense. I'm wing T. I wish I could get to one word and we can, I'm speaking of the national wing T clinic this year. And it always comes up, but I, I guess us wing T guys just make it hard. I coach, I've got play. I'm embarrassed to say this. I've got play calls that take like nine words. Just, just stay, just run the 100 series coach. You'll be fun. <laughs> um, coach. Hey, so, okay. I kind of get it that, Hey, I can win. I can do this with small guys. I can do this with big guys. You kind of talked about who your dude is, uh, which corners better um, coach. I know you can't go over formation, but um, can you give us an example of, of, you know, lining up to one or two formations? Yeah, sure. So, I mean, obviously, you know, we just went over, you know, uh, just straight 10 personnel. Now, some some coaches, they'll, they'll get scared of the uncovered slot because you have the back to that side. You fake the inside zone, pull the ball, get the ball on the perimeter. Now, you know, now you're two on two out here hoping the rover can come help. Right. So if we get if we got a, a, the, the hitch or the bubble by the slot. So w- what we do is to kind of take that. I don't want to say you know, we're not scared of it because we have guys that understand our coverage and things like that. But one of the things we will do um, for us, we will uh, if like, so, so some guys are scared of the uncovered slot. So what we'll do is um, we will detach the will linebacker. Like, like right now we have the ball on, on the right hash. So the Viper would be left because the field is to the left. So we have the Viper, the field corner and the field uh, safety. We're three over two to the field. Now, if you're scared of the uncovered slot, one of the adjustments we'll make is we'll add the rover into the box to replace the will. The will will detach into the boundary. So now what we are is we're three over two to the boundary. So we're playing two read on both sides. And, and what we'll do is with, with our guys, we're slanting them, right? 
So in this, in this, in this case, we're going to slant, you know, the back is the back is to um, the field. But in this, in, in this case, what we did was because they, this, this team had a tendency to sprint out to the field. We slanted our D line to the field when, when they gave us this formation. Um, and one rule that we did have in this game was if the back blocked the play side linebacker to the field would just add on to the formation to give to give that fourth, that fourth rusher. Um, so, you know, at, at, you know, as, as we go through this, it's, 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 it's just, a, it's a different, it's a different way to attack that 10 personnel look. Um, you know, again, our, our backer adds on and we had a pretty quick defensive end get, get, you know, get pressure on the, on the, on the quarterback. And again, at that backer added on really added that, you know, we talked about that fast and physical attacking philosophy, which for us, uh, you know, you know, really, really helped us. But if you're scared of the uncovered slot, all your, it's, it's a real, real simple adjustment. We, 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 we call it I'm out. So the, the rule for us is if you hear I'm out, the linebacker away from the Viper, which for us by game six was the will, the will knows he's out of the box. That's why we said I'm out. So he detaches and he apexes in between the tackle and the slot. The Rover now just comes into the box and replaces the will. So now what you have is you have the numbers. So now again, if they want to try to throw a combo route, well, we're three over two on both sides. And, and then and the, and the, the Mike's rule is that if you get sprint out, well, now the back is blocking. Now you're attaching. And now you have that, you gain that fourth rusher in, in, in the, uh, in the pass rush. Coach, I'm curious, why, why take the will your inside guy backer out on the slot and put the Rover in the box? Why not leave the ro- will in the box and put the Rover over the slot? Well, you know, coach, to be honest with you, when we, when we met with Iowa state, that was one of the things that they did in their pressure package. So if it, to me, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. And we just teach our kids that. And, um, you know, that's, it's been pretty successful for us to be honest with you. I'm kind of thinking through the advantages, um, because that's what I would have done. My Rover would have just been on the slot and I leave my two inside backers alone, but you're saying your Rover's your dude. Yep. Um, sometimes if you put your dude out in coverage, um, then he's lost that play because he's just guarding this guy and the play goes away from him. I, I can see the advantage of that. If you put your dude in the box and don't force him onto a slot, now he can still make plays all over the field where if you, if you put him on the slot, which is what I do, and you're making me rethink it, then he would only be involved in the play if the play went to his side. Yeah, correct. And the thing is too, and, and, our, and our will knows based on, you know, us going over his zone coverage routes. But I mean, the nice thing is, is that he understands if that, that end is either in a four eye or he's slanting inside, he knows he's a C gap player or a B gap player, depending on, you know, he, he knows he has the outside gap and run, but also knows he has help outside with the corner as well. So that's kind of the things that we'll, we'll discuss with him when, when we first install this. And again, it's, it's about numbers where the RPO guys want numbers. Well, I'm not real good at math, but three is greater than two. Right. So uh, now, now we're, we're making them think, and that's what we want to do. We, we want them to rethink their, their approach. And again, that's another thing like you and I talked about in the beginning is we're going to dictate to them, not them dictate to us. Um, coach, I can see a lot of similarities in the secondary. Um, I'm TCU 425. Um, coach, when I met you, I kept calling it a 3 3 stack, and you corrected me. You said, Coach, coach, it, this is not a 3 3 defense, um, it's a three high safety thing. Um, you want to touch on that real quick. And again, it's just one podcast coaches. We can't cover everything. You go over to allaccesscoaching.com. You'll see all of coaches stuff up. Um, you've got my read and react system up at allaccesscoaching.com. Um, you know, it, we've got about 20 hours of video of coach explaining all this, right? So unless you want to sit in your car for 20 hours, we can't explain everything in one podcast, but coach, this is not just an odd front. You were telling that you get into a four man front a lot. Yeah. So uh, what, what we've kind of done is uh, we kind of married our four two five philosophy pressure pressure wise and also our simulated pressure stuff, which is the double d- double a gap, the mug stuff. And um, just because, again, we want to be as multiple as possible uh, and, and give give same looks, but come from different areas. You know, a lot of people are like you guys do so much. Well, the thing is, it's like we, we look like we do a lot but it's all from the same look. So when, when the, the coordinators or the head coaches that are calling the offense watch, they can't just say to their kids, Hey, well, they're, they walk their will up and kick their nose to a three. This is what they're doing. Or, you know, they walk the, the, the they walk the mic and the Rover up and mug the a gap. This is what we're doing. So it, it's, it, to me, it's keeping the best personnel you have on the field being as multiple as possible 
but keeping it simple for the kids. So they do play fast. They do play physical and you're just relentless and run into the football. So those guys that want four, four D linemen, uh, they, they could do it in this system easily. It's all built in. Yes, sir. Yeah. So like, you know, what, what, we, yeah, what, what we'll do is we literally we'll kick the nose to a three and the, the better, the better of the two linebackers that are, that are, would be better inside in our, in our stunt game, they'll walk up and, they, and they'll be, they'll be the, the other three technique in the four down look. Um, coach, I, I, I know the podcast guys can see a coach just pulled up the Japanese all-star game coach. You're coaching in Cowboy stadium in the USA football all-star game. That's freaking cool. Um, coach, I'm assuming you're at least hit on one pressure here. It's called the fast and physical. And can you, can you go over at least give us, give us your best blitz coach. What did, what, did, what was your best blitz with these Japanese guys? So, uh, this one was pretty effective for us. And then, and then again, this is out of the three down look, uh, this was our, our, um, our smoke blitz. So we have two, we have two variations of this. We have fire and smoke and it's real. And why we have fire and smoke is that was a blitz. We have when I coached in, and played at Manasquan in New Jersey, but for the, for the linebackers, the eye in fire meant that they were the inside blitzers. The ends hurt fire. They knew they were outside smoke, which is the one we're going to talk about here. Smoke meant the linebackers were the edge guys. The ends were pinching inside. So the I and the O was the indicator. And then the coverage behind it was our press bail three stuff. And like I said, we wanted to show as much Tampa two as possible to too high. Um, obviously the Rover is the adjuster, but we wanted to press and play Tampa, but here we're press bail three. Anytime we ran fire or smoke, we press bail three. And we actually caught him in a bootleg here because they, they had the, you know, very athletic quarterback. This young man's going to go to Florida state next year. Um, and we have the, actually the Viper come clean uh, on this play. So we have the, the will linebacker and the Viper off the edge with the, the safeties are now the, the safeties are now going to come down and be the curl flat defenders. And this is what I was talking about. The Rover, the Rover in, in this blitz is now the free safety. So not only does he have to play in the box, learn how to run pressures. He also in these, in this poach coverage, we called it had to be, had to be a middle of the field defender. So we, we get great pressure by our Viper here unblocked for, for, for about a 10 yard loss. And then, so again, we were playing a Tampa two look post snap both the, the, the field safety and the boundary safety become the flat curl defenders and the Rover who's lined up over the back, which was number three in that case becomes the free safety and the corners are pressing and bailing out into the deep thirds. Awesome. Awesome. Um, coach, is this system kind of built in where, um, is it like you have one blitz for, for like, this is the by Viper blitz. This is my two inside linebacker blitzes. I mean, how do you quantify your blitzes? Cause I know you're, you're, you're not a three, three guy, but the roots of the three, three guys is, is it seems like they've got an infinite amount of blitzes. I don't even know how they keep it clear to all the kids. Um, Cause you know, you've got Viper blitzes. You're probably, you, I, I mean, do you have a blitz where you bring something where you could bring each guy? I, how do you quantify the blitzes? You, and then you have, if you got three down linemen, you got four man pressures and five man and six man. How, it kind of tells in the system. How is this? Sure. How did you teach all this in five days? There's got to be a system to it. Yeah. So, I mean, um, you know, we looked at and again, it goes back to one of those first bullet points, right? Like, you know, what, what personnel do you have? Um, so, you know, we looked at the we knew who the offensive coordinator was for the U.S. team. We knew he was um, a guy from, you know, we and you had uh, six high school coaches coaching against uh, seven college coaches in this game. So my staff was all high school. Their staff was all college. And we looked at who the offensive coordinator was and we looked at, okay, you know, here, here are our pressures. What, 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 what do we think we'll, we'll do well? So like I mentioned, like smoke and fire, they kind of married to each other because it's the same guys. It's the Viper and the will linebacker and, and the mic, the mic would stay in the middle. Um, the, uh, the, the, the Cobra, which is our, our boundary stuff, which will be in the system. Um, our, our twist game, things like that for, for us coach, to be honest with you, we wanted, we wanted to have four pressures going into this game. We ran all four um, and, and, and they were successful. Um, I'm, you know, I, I, I talk about it when we, you know, talk about teaching this stuff. It's like, it's a uh, educational stacking, right? It's like when you, when you learn math, you didn't go right from math to multiplication. It was math, subtraction, multiplication, division. So don't skip a step, right? Don't skip a step. So, you know, for us, it was by the second day of practice, because we had, we had eight practices in a scrimmage. 
before we played this game because we went two a days. Um, we knew by practice four what was good, what wasn't good based on the personnel we had. You know, so we don't want to over teach things. We don't want to give the kids too much. Um, but with the Palmetto Ridge team, we did a little bit more, obviously, in the East Lee out of different looks and things like that. So the system will give you many, many options, whether to be three down, four down, six down, come from depth, show the same look. The system will give you all these options and you really have to figure out how that curtails to your to your personnel. Is it the old, uh, the, uh, you know, some people don't like it. I love it. The old toolbox now, do you, right? We have all these tools in the garage and, and depending on the job, those are the tools I grab. So, so, so before you even go into the season, if you know who your kids are, you already are saying, all right, I'm just going to use a, a simple number. This number doesn't apply to your system, but I've got a 20 chapter book and you're saying going into this season, I know that I'm going to put in this, these first 16 chapters, these other four chapters aren't going to apply to this year's team. Then each game you're wanting to whittle down even more and say, okay, I'm going to go into the game with just these four things. Um, you might in August have taught 12 or 15 things. The system would allow you to teach 20 or 30, but based on that team that year, who you have coming back, am I correct? So then in August, you're like, okay, we're going to, we, we know that this is what we're going to be good at. Let's get these 12 or 15 things in. And then each game, even whittle it down more. Is that kind of your, how you, how you think? Yeah. So, um, yeah, so yeah, absolutely. So, yeah. So we want to, we want to, you know, obviously look at our personnel, but also too is, you know, we, we want to, we want to see what, what our guys can understand, right. You know, what, 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 what they, what, what, what they feel comfortable with. So, um, yeah, I'd rather, I'd rather have more in the beginning and take away as the season goes on. But like you and I were talking about before by week six, most all coaches will have all your game film. So if you want to go the route of the same look for everything, well, they're going to see the same look, but there's going to be eight, nine, 10 pressures off that same look, just depending on, you know, who you're facing and, you know, and what works well for you. So yeah, I definitely want to add more in the beginning and, and detract as the season goes on. Um, man, coach, this is awesome. And I, I, I just, the whole time and thinking how cool to coach a bunch of Japanese kids in five days, like, like not just football wise, what it taught you just culturally and interacting with those kids and, they respond obviously different to coaching than Americans probably did. Um, that was, that was really cool. Yeah. That, that, I, I told my guys that, you know, I had been the DB coach uh, for the Japanese team in 2017 uh, for USA football. And um, I told my guys, um, I was fortunate enough to have like my high school position coach on that staff guys at my head coach who, who had been colleagues. we got guys that really, um, I was kind of paying it, paying it back to them for, for, for molding me as a coach. And I said, it's going to be the easiest week of practice because you tell these kids something once they're doing it. And if they mess up, they apologize to you. Um, you know, I'll give, I'll give you a quick story real quick. You know, our Rover, uh, this young man named die, um, he, he, he messed up on a run fit, but we still got off, you know, still got the, then the punt, the ball. And he, he apologized to me for about two minutes on the sideline. And he's like, I'm sorry, coach. I'm sorry. Like, listen, just next, next, just don't stop apologizing. You know, it's when we get out there, you, sh you show me, show me that, you know, how you want to respond. So that, that was the, that I told him it's going to be the easy, easiest week of practice for you. Wow. 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 Coach, this was awesome. I got about three pages of notes here, three high safety stuff. You saying things I was, I was uh, writing and, and, and it's, this is, this exciting. Um, you know, we got all coaches stuff up guys. If you want to learn more, it's over at all coaching.com. We've got this whole system there. The, the fast and physical three high safety system. Um, whether you want to buy the system or you just want to pick and choose, he's got videos on just what he does on trips. He's got videos on, on what he's doing against the run game and run fits. And he's got his blitzes. Um, he's got a bunch of installation stuff with practice video and drills and things like that. Um, there's also a playbook over there. So if you want to head over there and, and get more stuff. Um, so um, coach, other than going to the system, um, uh, guys, we will be doing a webinar. So go over this, uh, over to the website. Um, I'll have coach on at least once a month doing webinars. And, um, we also have our forum, which there will be a, there's a thread in the forum, uh, dedicated just to coaches system. So you guys can go in there and ask away and, and, and coach will get notified and, and, and he'll know you ask a question. He can log in, give him, you know, 24 hours. He has married a little kid or two little kids, I think. And, uh, and he can get in there and answer your questions on the forum. So there's lots of ways on the all access coaching website that you can get a hold of coach. Um, coach, you got anything else to add to that? 
Oh yeah. I mean, like I said, I, I just want to thank you for the opportunity to, to be on coach and um, you know, really want to I look forward to speaking with guys and helping them understand, you know, what we do. And um, even if it's, you know, it's like when we go to clinic, right. If, if you can pick up one thing that'll help your team out and um, you know, help, help you become successful and put your kids in the best position to be successful too. I mean, I, I think that's a great thing. So th th this whole experience uh, has been phenomenal. Just being able to be able to reach guys, you know, continentally and globally to help them, you know, be be better on defense. Awesome, awesome. So again, this uh, this podcast was brought to you by AlexisCoaching.com. If this is your first time listening to our podcast, make sure you subscribe as we will be doing three of these podcasts every week. They're always free. Every Monday, I interview a coach or partner from the Glacier Drive family. And then on Thursdays, I interview coaches from the All Access coaching family. Coach Gibbs is now one of the, on the All Access coaching team with, you know, Coach McManus and Coach Roger Holmes and, and Kelly Lee and uh, Ke Kenny Simpson and, and myself. And we got this team of All Access coaches. And I post those up every Thursday. And then Sunday nights is just Rick Stewart rambling about program building, wing T, 425 defense and strength coaching, uh, strength training. Uh, these podcasts and the downloads that go with them are always free. Uh, you can find them at Stitcher, Spotify, iTunes, and everywhere else podcasts are found. There's also tons of free PowerPoints, PDFs, webinars at both the Glacier Drive and the All Access Coaching website. Make sure you follow us on the Coach Rick Stewart Twitter account, uh, my Coach Rick Stewart Facebook page, and our YouTube channel, where we upload three new videos a week. And of Coach, uh, if you guys look at the screen, a uh, Coach's Twitter handles up there also, so you guys can get a hold of him. Um, um, I would say, Coach, probably, I, I'm guessing by how much we've corresponded, Twitter's your preferred mode of communication. I think you're on there a lot. So uh, yeah, that's probably that'd be a good way to get a hold of you. Uh, Coach's email's also up there. You guys can get a hold of him. Um, so you guys can reach out him personally or go to our website. Like I said, a coach is on our team, so he'll be he'll you'll see him a lot on the All Access Coaching website with webinars and forums and things like that. Coach, uh, thanks for your time. Um, you know, it's a New Year's New Year's Day tomorrow. We we got things to do, and I want to wrap this up and and uh, I look forward to our next webinar. We'll be doing uh, we're doing these at least once a, once a month, maybe twice a month in the off season, Coach. So enjoy your New Year's and uh, oh well, go in the Orange Bowl tomorrow, right? You got go, uh, go blue, baby, go blue. Michigan. How exciting. Yep. So, uh, Coach, enjoy your day, and, and we'll talk later. Thanks, Coach. I appreciate it.